Pilati and Margaret, and we've been living in vehicles all over the world since 2016. But in 2020, the pandemic halted our nomadic travels, mysterious new virus, and locked us down here in a small village of Czech Republic, where we started our e-bike business, renovated an abandoned junkyard building into our dream workshop, converted a lumber mill into our van build barn, and took on building three tiny home projects, our ultimate camper van, a container home, and a cabin in the woods. Oh yeah, and we got married. I now pronounce you husband and wife. We're in the final stages of these three build projects, so make sure to subscribe to the channel and catch the grand finale of each, plus some shenanigans along the way. Everybody ready? I am so friggin' stoked because this week we have more people helping on the van than ever before. Normally it's been like kind of one at a time, but we're just going full on and our kind of dreams would be dealing with the spoiler, dealing with the monitor, dealing with the arc in the cab, maybe installing like the fridge if we can finish up some of the wiring. But then like we can move on with some of the bigger stuff, you know, like the couch and the bathroom and all of that. <laughs> it is nice it has that manual setting though because every time going in and out in the van with the light on would be a little bit much I think. I know they sell a lot of spoilers online that you can get, but because we made our own solar rack, uh, we were kind of doomed to also need to create our own spoiler, which I didn't necessarily think of when we were making the solar rack, but this is tiny compared to that project. <laughs> Safety first. This is not that difficult to glue. We have these 3D printed brackets. We're gonna glue them, clamp them to this deflector first, then just apply the glue from the bottom, all of these brackets, sit them, measure from the solar so it's even, put a bit of a weight on them so they don't slide down on the glue and that's it. Wind deflector was pretty obvious, from the beginning you will need one. There was multiple ways how to make one, I was thinking fiberglass, maybe aluminum, so we ended up with just aluminum sheet and the 3D printed brackets. Brackets are printed from ASA, so that's water UV resistant. We're using, you know, carbon glue and that should do the job. That's all it does. It only deflects wind. <laughs> you can notice there is a gap between the deflector and the solar. It's because the whole solar frame lifts up to 47 degrees, I think, and we need some tolerances. These are all leftover tiles that have been stored in the front barn. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see if we can actually use any of these for the it's, container. It actually looks like a mistake order because this is way too big leftover. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's going to be for the whole container, but if we just calculate how much we have here, we might end up just buying one or two packages. And these are really nice tiles. Attic is here. Can kind of see how we're cutting corners we're playing with leftover tiles so and to make sure that we can maximize them as much as possible we're skipping the tiling under the kitchen and seeing how far we can get
Thank you for all of your uh, heating comments. I think for the floor heat, I think we're a little too late. Decided because of the shortage of tiles that we're gonna make this carpet. And then if we end up putting the fireplace in, we'll just like rip the carpet out and add the tiles. But with honestly the how cold it's been and how warm it is inside, even with a tiny heater, um, we're gonna see how it goes. We also need to make this door the same color as this gray and finish up up top. Monitor. Monitor in a van. I absolutely love the built-in projector we had before mm -hmm. because for movies it was amazing, but for work uh, that's a little bit different because we had to completely darken the interior of the car to see anything on, a, on this brightness, right, with yeah. projector. So this time we have a little bit di different requirements. We are now more digital work oriented, so we need to have a proper workstation. So I'm uh, going for 27 inch 4K monitor. <laughs> that I'll be prototyping a really cool rail for it. We ditched the rail because I think it's over the top unnecessary, mainly because like whoever sits here needs to have that laptop plugged in anyways. The arm is height adjustable. You can stop it in any angle. And ideally if the monitor has a bow joint here, I can move it here and have a monitor here from a couch. We can also flip it up and it can be a big screen like in the corner of the van for when we're cooking and checking the news or something. In oh, the I'm watching a cook show. Do we know how we're gonna make it? No. Do we know what we want? Yes. That's the best place to start. <laughs> I wanna be hiding the monitor when it's flipped down here, then going here to hide. And then also flip, hide here the 3D printer because that's not used all the time. So it doubles the space as a monitor or a 3D printer. So this past weekend I came across what are called like RAM clips and they are really cool for being able to mount like monitors or GPS or whatever else in adventure vehicles. I showed Lottie and turns out he had actually had one, but this is super cool. So we're gonna try to, hi, incorporate this for the monitor and be able to use it to kind of secure a cool position. Okay. Stop squeaking there. Every time I work on a more complicated prototypes like this monitor where the sizes really matter, I always make something, you know, out of cardboard and wood just to get the proportions right, just to get the right height, right angle, prevent some collisions because this is so much easier to cut wood rather than weld metal and cut metal and recut and re-weld. Kavi is on this project, which is amazing. I can be moving on and developing other projects. And we are utilizing the RAM clamp we had lying around. I noticed they have a little bit bigger ones, so we'll see how this one holds up all the weight and driving. And eventually we can buy the bigger one. But it's pretty obvious that in two locked positions, whether it's along the ceiling or whether it's covering the 3D printer, for driving, it might need extra locking latch or hook or something to keep it in place and so the whole monitor doesn't vibrate or doesn't shake too much. I think it turns out pretty nice, especially with the 3D printed joint covers and a handle and everything teal the way we are used to. Mm, I think this looks amazing. It looks like a fun unified product. This is a good handle. Adds a whole new layer of complexity to that arm. Aesthetically pleasing. I'm hustling a little bit with the charging the computer. That's supposed to be charged through a thunderbolt from the monitor and it works as a data transfer. I'm having some issues. I don't know why the cables don't work for me. I, I bought the expensive ones, so I'm a little bit behind. You will see the finished result in the next video. It's about 8.30, it's 
small heater is going. I'm gonna shower and overall, pretty awesome day. This is how I get to sleep now because we're parked right next to the fireplace. Oh, sorry about the dirty workshop here. This is it, pajama heaven. Uh, uh. We were so close to having just needed the leftovers except for one tile. But we didn't think it would get us this far, so we literally ordered a whole nother set. Yeah. Malcolm in the middle. Three Radek and Harry just showed up too, so they're gonna help us finish off the tiles, um, apart from the one missing tile. <laughs> and uh, so I get a little bit of a break from painting, which is good, and I can jump in and see how I can help on the van, or at least document it, and clean up the workshop, do all the chores. This just looks so good. It's me and Kabi today working on the container. The guys are done, so we kind of have to like tag team. So Lottie and Pavel are working on the container. I'll be helping in here. Kavi finished yesterday the insulation for the entire floor, which was his idea. We would have completely forgot that stuff. And then now laying boards so we can also then lay the carpet. There's always a lot of small projects in the background that we usually don't talk about because it's just not interesting. So a few examples, we don't have a UV light sorted for the filtration system. So we didn't have a seals, we didn't have a tubing, we didn't have a tab. So we had to sort out how to turn it on so you can see a switch and a label. We had a problem with a hot water system, the spiral would always burn our relays. So Pavel was on it, he had to replace few things. I'm also adding a label and a sticker for the tech panel board where we can be adjusting RPM of our electric heater. Essentially we're moving towards having all the electronics done so we can close the box with the lithium and we can slide the fridge in. We want to be testing the systems before we start taking it on the road. It's a lot of compromises with the kitchen at the workshop, so we're really speeding up towards having a full kitchen inside of that camper van, where we sleep, cook, relax, and Margaret also edits. <laughs> There's a lot of adjustments. I had to cut the lip of that fridge to fit it in. I had to change hinges. These hinges did not fit in there, how tight the space is. So I had to use piano hinges. That works now. Next, we need to add a foil 
all over the floor, lifting it up and getting out of that unit just in case we have any condensation or, or any defrost, anything that would go straight out to the floor here and not on a battery. That's the last thing we need to do before adding the sliders to open the fridge and the door at the same time and that's it. It's good. <laughs> That is Mitzi May. You're making a scene about a cat. I was going to at least introduce her briefly, like 30 seconds, so it just takes two skips. Mitzi showed up at the workshop last winter. After months of avoidance, she got her first human touch and hasn't stopped thanking us for it since. She's unnaturally sweet, has very few teeth accompanied by terrible breath, loves to cuddle, talk, be carried around like an infant, and is exceptionally unintelligent. Love her for it. We've been providing her with a temporary home until we can find a family who can love her better than we do. Mitzi wouldn't survive van life or any adventure, really. She's destined to be a chunky, snuggly house cat, which she has showed us every time we bring her to the cabin. Look what just came off. Get rid of this kind of arc. Square it off a little bit more. There's a lot of companies that like fundamentally piss me off. And now, Prima Licks, you're on my list. You want to tell me that's white? You want to say to my face that this is a white color? Even if I turn up the brightness, it's not white. Look at that hoop difference. What kind of marketing is this? In what world would someone think white? No. Hopefully it will get better as it dries. Uh, it's definitely improved, but it's still like, just ew. Huh? That's it, I'm out of here. Kitten in the morning, happy kitten. Mm. <laughs> it wouldn't be a weekend without extra weekend projects and I definitely have a few of those upstairs. I'm so proud of the shelving system. These simple consoles uh, carry so much weight, they're duplicatable, right? That I printed a bunch of them for all of this shelving system. What do you guys think? This is mainly to cover this breaker box, with probably some kind of a print or something. And this is like a, on its own a design art, let's say that we have a line system on this empty space. It's extra, extra storage for things. This is printed in gray, gray edging, black melamine. And this is my <laughs> improved second version that has a screw hole from the bottom. So I can just attach them and lock them in. This first version, I'm just gluing in. Second version, removable, just in case. That's nice. Fingers crossed, I'm not gonna break anything. I'm gonna chip a corner. That's so good. Is it nice? It's really nice. And I should at least maybe secure it with something with a tape so it doesn't fall on us later. <laughs> hey all, welcome to my cabin editing studio. I'm just wrapping up the video 
And earlier today, I had come across some old footage that Lottie had taken from the very first week that we met. And I kind of want to share it with you, but I never really know when that would even work in the video. So I was thinking that I might just throw it in this outro and just have fun with it. So a little bit random, but we're going with it. You guys are the best and we will see you next Sunday. Bye.